Oh yeah, yeah, you can see four coffins there. Hi guys, welcome to another Dead Good Walk. Today we're at Brompton Cemetery in uh, West Brompton near Chelsea in London. And as you can see the cemetery is open from half past one o'clock on Sundays, Christmas Day, Good Friday and Ascension Day. Oops, sorry. Just trying to carry a coffee as well at the same time. So Brompton's one of the magnificent seven cemeteries you can find in London. Um, and it was opened by an Act of Parliament in 1840. This is my second visit here, I didn't do a video last time. But I've come for the uh, Catacombs tour uh, to see the grave of Emmeline Pankhurst and to check out the apparent time machine that's here. This is Dr. Benjamin Golding, founder of Charing Cross Hospital. Um, it's quite a sad story, he had nine children and most of them died in infancy. Um, his wife Sarah was a heiress to a perfume empire and she funded most of his uh, medical studies. This is Henry Petit, a British actor, and he died in 1893. This one looks like it's been painted at some point. Oh, who's this? We might have a little friend here. The squirrels are so tame here that they'd end up on top of your head if you give them a chance. Hello, mate. You can get so close to them and they're not even bothered. Right, anyway, sorry, where was we? Come on, you two. The family vault of William and Susanna Morgan. Let's have a look see if we can see anything. No, I think it's too dark. Check this one out. The Victorians really knew how to build graves, didn't they? Or build tombs even. Look at the detail in the faces. Copper door with glass in the middle. Oh, there's our friend again. Hey Stompy. What did he say? Hello Stompy. Vault of Charles Cave, great name. This one says Harvey Lewis on the door. I wonder if you can see anything with the uh, sunlight pointing towards it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see four coffins there. I think there's going to be a lot of player noises in this video, so I apologise for that, but we're on the flight path for Heathrow Airport. Now this next one's the apparent time machine. Um, it's either thought that the mausoleum is the time machine, or there's a time machine hidden inside it. And it's the tomb of Hannah Cortoy, who befriended... Uh, Egyptian archaeologist called Joseph Bonamy and it's thought that they both learnt the secrets of time travel from the ancient Egyptians uh, you can see on the door there's various hieroglyphics and things like that and apparently they've lost the key so they can't determine what's inside it exactly now Hannah's friend Joseph Bonamy is actually buried just a few meters away from where she's buried. I'll take you there now. What an amazing thought that the pair of them could be traveling through time now having adventures. And this is his grave, Joseph Bonamy. You can 
see the symbol there at the bottom, Anubis. And that's how close it is to Hannah's mausoleum. Just want to show you this uh, next to Bonamy's grave. It's a grave in the style of an altar, complete with a floor and everything. How do you say that? Connie Bear? Connie Beer? Lovely one here in the shape of a chapel. I'm sure this was open last time I came. Or maybe I'm just imagining it, I'm not sure. So now we're going to go for a walk on the terraces, which is above the catacombs. see a bell tower there on the other side, I'll tell you about that a bit later. These are one of the entrances to the crypts below. Here we are in the main opening. Uh, I read that there wasn't meant to be as many graves here, but it's, it proved to be that popular that they decided to make more space for people. This was meant to be just an open parkway. So the plaques you can see on the wall on the left hand side, they're uh, the names of the people that are buried in the catacombs and the position of the plaque is the same position as the body is in the catacomb below, if that makes sense. So we're just walking around the back of the chapel now. Um, apparently this is the older part of the graveyard. But it all looks old to me. George Kent, age 84 years. The bath stone looks amazing in the sunlight, doesn't it? just made for it. We're just in front of the chapel now walking down the main drag. It's about half an hour until the catacombs tour so I'll just film this section here and then uh, I'll head down. So I've just finished the catacombs tour and it was really good. Um, you wasn't allowed to film down there but I did get some bits. Um, I'll probably keep that for a, a separate video and put a link up in this one so you can watch it. God these planes are just constant today, it's crazy. I always think they're going to crash when they make that whirling noise. So there's a chapel there in front of us, um, unfortunately it wasn't open today but it's a good excuse to come back isn't it for another visit.
I just can't believe how many gravestones there are. You could literally spend weeks here just filming every single one. I've read online that there's over 200,000 bodies buried here and 35,000 gravestones. This is the grave of Sir Leslie Stuart Brass, who was a lawyer and advisor to the government. Very nice Art Nouveau tomb there. So this section of the cemetery and the Great Circle we've just been in was actually modelled on St Peter's Basilica in Rome, <coughs> which was a, a bit of a gimmick to try and attract people to the cemetery and build their grand mausoleums and things like that. Um, but it soon fell out of favour and the project got into financial difficulty. If you can see up there, there's meant to be a bell tower like the one on the other side. Um, and interestingly, the one on the other side that was built, um, it doesn't contain a bell because they ran out of money. Just want to show you this guy next. So this is Rex Warneford who was awarded the Victoria Cross for air bombing a Zeppelin during the First World War. Coming up to the grave of the 19th Lord Forbes who was the uh, youngest officer in the Battle of Waterloo. So this next one's the grave of artist and uh, I think he was a writer as well, um, Valentine Princep, who was born in India and uh, who's a big part of the pre-Raphaelite movement. Almost looks like cork, really strange. So this is probably one of the most eye-catching tombs in Brompton. Um, looks like a copper chapel or copper house. Very unique. And it's uh, Frederick Richard Leyland of Walton Hall, Liverpool. I've actually been to Walton Hall. It's like um, it's an old manor house, but it's derelict now. And uh, I went in once just exploring, having a look around. That's an interesting link. Can't see a name on this one, but there is a coat of arms above the door. Let's see if I can see anything inside. No, it's too dark, I think. Our mate's back. Sorry, I've got nothing for you. I've only got chili peanuts. I don't think you can eat them. This is like the Harvey Lewis one, wasn't it? With the coffins inside. Naylor Leyland. It's too dark, this one. I can't see anything. I wish I'd have brought my torch. a little look in here while no one's around. Oh yeah, that's coffin. Wow, look at that. Let's check this other window out. Oh yeah, you can see the lead lining on that one as well. God. Stunning lion there, that's like the one in Highgate, isn't it? Let's use this one. 
John Jackson. WFH Fletcher. Classic Roman style there. I like the style of this one with the coat of arms at the bottom. Family vault of Herbert Fitch. Another Egyptian revival tomb there, like the Hannah Courtois one. So just on my way out I remembered the Emmeline Pankhurst grave and I can't believe I walked right past it at the beginning. Uh, this is hers here, the brown coloured one. Um, if you don't know, Emmeline Pankhurst was a political activist and she was protesting for votes for women with a couple of squirrels there. Well, I think I'll wrap this one up now, guys. Um, I'm just on my way to West Norwood Cemetery now, so when you see that video, it'll be from the same day. Thanks for watching again. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave a comment if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one.